Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. Father, we're here to give you thanks tonight, oh God. Lord, from our hearts, Lord God, we don't do that enough. But tonight, Lord God, we just want to gather together to say that you are good that your mercy endures forever, Lord God, that your love reached us, oh God, and chased after us, oh God, and that's why we're here. Lord, your great compassion and your mercy and your patience with us, Lord Jesus. And Father, we want to say not only that we're thankful and we're grateful, but that we love you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you have done in our lives, oh God. Thank you, Lord God, that you're a God that Lord God, you're not done with us yet. You're not finished yet, Lord God. There's so much more, God, that you want to show us and do in our lives, oh God. And you have our attention, Lord Jesus. Father, continue to have your way among us tonight. As we continue, Father, to give you all the praise and glory that's due to your name. Father, we love you. We love you, Lord Jesus. And we ask these things in Jesus' name and the people of God said. Amen. Before you be seated, can we give the Lord one more praise offering? A loud praise offering to the Lord of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Well, very special uh, Tuesday night uh, tonight uh, where we want to give testimony of the goodness of God. And there's no better way uh, to do that than to hear uh, from the people of God. And tonight we've asked some folks to share uh, their testimony of thanks to the Lord. And we have uh, a few that are going to come, but right now we're going to go with our first brother that's going to break the ice. Would you help me welcome Dan Lewis as he comes and give testimony of the goodness of God in his life. Good evening, everybody. Um, as Pastor Joey asked me to provide my testimony a couple days ago, um, specifically on, on being thankful for something. Um, I, I have so much in my life to be thankful for. Uh, you know, wonderful family, wonderful church family. Uh, God just has, has blessed me tremendously. But something that I, I came back to over and over again was uh, the journey that God took me through over the last couple of years with my job. So um, I'm going to talk about that. So uh, I am thankful for a God who opens doors that need to be open and closes doors that need to be closed. Um, Isaiah 22, 22 states that what he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. Um, so I had been struggling with my job for, for years. There have been a lot of uh, people taking advantage of, of my work ethic, just a lot of, uh, you know, just a lot of situations going on. Um, many of my brothers have, have been praying for me, and uh, just seemed like I had been going over and over and over and just seemed to be no relief at all. Um, I was doing everything in my strength, and that was, that was the first problem. You know, doing things in his strength uh, makes a world of difference. So, you know, as, as we continue to pray and pray and pray and seek God, just nothing seemed to be happening. Prayers weren't being answered, and, and I thought all hope was lost. But we, we know that God has different plans for us. So an, an opportunity came up for a significant promotion at my job. Um, this was a senior leadership position um, for the same area at my work that uh, had been for the last 20 years. But this position was one that um, it was typically reserved for those that were other higher managers within our organization. Um, there were three other managers that um, were already kind of waiting in the wings for this position. And, you know, it was at a different functional area than what I was used to. And, and you know, everything seemed stacked against me. Um, but I just prayed, Lord, if this is your will, let it be. Um, and then all of the different scenarios happened. I applied for the job. Um, they closed the, the position. Then they reopened it a number of times. And, and this whole time I'm thinking, this is God telling me, hey, you're not qualified. Just accept it. 
Um, later found out that it was a mistake due to HR that caused the whole thing to keep happening. But until then, <laughs> um, yeah, it's just uh, crazy, crazy things happen. Um, I, I went for my interview, and due to a, um, an electrical issue in our neighborhood, the power went out. My, my interview was virtual, and the power that never goes out in my neighborhood went out for the whole day. <laughs> so all my preparation, all my notes, um, I had to just abandon them, went to my in-law's basement, and just, you know, Lord, Lord, just, just be with it. Um, a, a ton of other number of things that happened. Um, it just seemed like every roadblock was coming up along the way. And I was like, Lord, you open this door. Let, let's, let's see it through. So I went through my interview, uh, which for a, a position of this caliber didn't last that long. And so <laughs> everybody's like, oh, good job. <laughs> um, and I, I went into work the next day. Um, typically with positions like this, um, it requires at least a second interview, reference follows up. It, it's, a, it's a pretty lengthy process. Um, but the next morning, I was called into one of the hiring manager's offices, and I was like, okay, uh, this is them just saying thank you, but it's, it's, it's not right. Um, but that's not what happened. Um, sorry. Um, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Yeah, God had other plans. Uh, one of the Bible verses that I, I kept thinking uh, was Matthew 7, 7 through 8. It says, ask and it will be given to you. and the door will be open for you. Man. So after all these struggles, I found out later on that, you know, it seemed like nothing was working, nothing was going on behind the scenes. Um, turns out two of the three hiring managers, they had already talked about me getting the position. Uh, it was almost like, hey, this is his to lose. Um, one of the hiring managers even said she prayed for me before my interview. Um, she didn't do that for anybody else. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, it, it went well. Um, actually, the day before my interview, Pastor Joey had uh, given the church a definition of meek. You know, it's used to describe Jesus. And often people are, they, they think of meek and they think, oh, he, he kind of uh, was pushed around. Um, but we come to find that, that meek is strength or power under control. Um, and Jesus is the perfect example of a servant leader. And that's what the, the term that kept coming up after my interview, um, that they said there was a quality in me, <laughs> praise Jesus, uh, of servant leadership. And... Uh, it all goes to him. So, uh, that's not to say that the the road the road has been super smooth in my new position. It's been wonderful, but it, it's it's a lot of work. Um, I'm not sure what God has planned for me, um, but I know that He's with me every step of the way, and I know that if He opened this door, that He's with me and He's going to see me through regardless. So. Um, I just want to leave you all today with uh, one last Bible verse uh, for somebody that may need a door opened or a door closed in their life. And it's uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So.
Amen. Amen. Dan, I know the plan that God has for you is to make you a light there and an example of servant leadership. Amen. To continue to give God glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Right now, we're going to continue our praise and thanksgiving report by inviting a very special lady. Claudia Camacho is going to come up. Um, she is such a blessing here, worked so hard in the ministry with us, and she's going to give thanks to God. When I was 15 years old, and I coming from a divorced parents, and we end, uh, we enter in a big battle, you know, between my mom and my dad, and we suffered a lot. And when the Lord uh, came to our lives, first to my to my my father, the the our lives change a lot. And the Lord started to work in our lives. And then he brought me here. The Lord brought me here. Opened the door to come. And here um, I met my husband, who I lost 12 years ago. It was uh, the most painful uh, situation that I passed. But I'm here to testify and glorify my Lord that he carried me through that dark time. Um, my husband uh, got a rare can kind of cancer and it was a little ball. It, st it started as a little ball and behind his nose and um, growth and he it was putting pressure in his brain and that caused him a lot of uh, headaches very severe headaches we struggled with that for about three years going back to going through hospitals home hospitals home and uh, in my heart it was like we were praying that the Lord heal him, right? And, but the Lord has another plan. And that was unexpected for me. Uh, it hit me a lot, but at the same time, um, looking back, I saw the kindness of the Lord because he has been carrying me through that pain. Uh, when he passed away in 2009, the day that I buried him, I buried myself with him. And I spent three years mad with resentment and uh, deep pain. But then my Lord came to rescue me. As I know, that is rescuing, rescuing a lot of uh, people. And after three years that I was mad and I didn't want to pray and I didn't want to read the Bible, one day I was come, uh, driving to my job when um, I was listening radio and I was diving, and then uh, a song comes up, and it was a song by Hillsong that is saying, part of that song say, this is my prayer in the desert when all that's within me feels dry. And I felt so dry at that point that, that those words uh, hit my heart, and I start crying. And 
all day long I was crying and I was so shamed in my job because I was crying and crying. <laughs> and when I returned home, uh, I got up on my knees and I started crying and, and asking the Lord why, why that happened to me and my, and my husband. And then the Lord took me to Isaiah 53. That is say, do not, uh, oh, I'm sorry, no, it's, surely he took up our pain and bore out suffering. Yet we consider him punished by God, striking by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. Then that made me, that reminds me the suffering of the Lord. And that reminds me also that he never promised a path of roses. He promised to be with us, to strengthen us, to encourage us, and keep us safe. And he did that. He did that after three years that I was in darkness, that I was uh, drowned in my pain and my sorrow. He took me that night and he showed me that he loves me. And he uh, told me that I have to move on. And then I started another, another process of healing. The Lord put the right people around me that help me, that support me. And I can count in that process coming to this church. And that the Lord blessed me with a family in this church. And the Lord has changing my pain and my sorrow in gladness. I don't know if you are going through battles through uh, stuff that you think that you will never go out from there, I can assure you that he is the Lord of second chances, that he is the Lord that renew our, our lives, and that he can do something good from the ugly. I thought at that moment when I lost my husband, that I would never, never feel joy again. But now I'm very glad that he is uh, taking my heart and that he is giving me reasons to live. And I'm glad for that. I'm very thankful. And I just can say that the Lord is our shepherd and the Lord is our shield. And that is my testimony. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Claudia. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord who heals our wounds. Amen. Amen. And he's the joy of our heart. I'm so thankful to the Lord. I'm glad that the Lord uh, is honest with us, right? That, uh, and that this isn't it. You know, this is just a little journey with uh, a lot of bumps and bruises and sours and pains and joy as well. But we learn, right, that it's God who is our joy. A relationship with him that is what we rejoice about. And that's never, ever going to go away. That's going to last us through eternity. Amen. Right now, I'm going to invite a very special young lady. Sister Faith is going to come on up. And she's going to give thanks to God for what the Lord is doing in her life. Good evening. God is good. My uh, 
testimony is very uh, similar to her story that she just shared. Um, God is a God of second chances. And um, I'm so blessed to, to have this chance to share what he has done for me. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, the, the Bible tells us, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And so that means not only in the good times, but sometimes even in the hard times, the difficult times, we can give him thanks. And so when I was praying about what to share, the Lord asked me to share something that is difficult to talk about, something that very few people know. So I'm trusting that he'll give me the strength to share because he deserves the glory. Um, so I'll just get straight to it. When I was, when I graduated from high school, I found myself in a really, really difficult situation. I found myself in an extremely abusive, physically, mentally, psychologically, in every way that you can imagine. I found myself in an abusive uh, relationship. And I had never experienced something like that. I was so young. I, I was in shock and fear. Like, I, I can't even describe the, the pain the, and just how the situation was. And, and I was praying, and, and God was telling me, like, be vulnerable. It's okay. So he told me to give an example so you can understand the, the gravity of the situation. And uh, he reminded me of a day where this person's sister just had a, a newborn and um, she asked me to give her a ride to the hospital a, a few weeks after because uh, the, the, the baby wasn't feeling well. So I said, yeah, of course. And so we were driving to the hospital. It was in the winter. It was so cold and snowing. And um, I remember uh, this person wanted to, to smoke in the car and um, and of course me and his sister were like no like you know there's a newborn and long story short he wouldn't listen the sister ended up get getting out walking to the hospital with a newborn baby and in, in the winter and I, I was left in the car and he was so upset that I had taken her side that he there was a physical interaction he choked me he took my keys my my car keys and just left me stranded on the side of the road and this is one story of, of many this was my life for almost two years and I lived a life of pain sorrow a life of grief. I tried to leave so many times and I, I could not find a way out. He would not let me leave and I was just fear, so afraid. And I, I never thought I'd get out of it. I lost hope. And I remember a time when God began speaking to me. <laughs> And he shared with me Romans 8.1 verses that there's therefore no, now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. And he told me that he had other plans for me, other plans for my life. And I remember at the time there was the church we were going to was near our house. My parents had a key. And uh, so when they weren't home, I would take the key when no one was, could see me. And I will go to church. And I would pray. And I would worship God. And I would beg him to, to, to remove me, to make a way. And he did. And my mom was praying for me. And my dad was praying for me. And the Lord, he, he got me out of that situation. And he didn't just get me out of that situation. In Jeremiah 29, 11, 
as Dan shared earlier, his, uh, the verse says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And so because I was still so broken, traumatized, scared, like I, I just, I, I lived a, a life of, of fear. The Lord began revealing himself to me as my father. And he began to, to just remind me and reintroduce me to his love for me and remind me of my identity. And he said, Faith, you're mine, you're my daughter. <laughs> you know, at the time I felt deserted from everybody else. I felt like I couldn't talk to anyone, no one would understand my pain. <laughs> And you know what? There's no better place to be than just being deserted to God. You know, sometimes in life we can go through things where we feel like no one understands. Or you feel like it's too, you have too much shame to share with people. But God understands. And uh, I just want to share uh, a, a word that he gave me that just blessed my heart and revealed his, his heart to me. In Isaiah 54... And um, I read from verse 4, it says, Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of your youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. He said, For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name and thy redeemer the holy one of israel the god of the whole earth shall he be called he said for the lord had called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of youth when thou was refused save thy god and in verse 10 it says for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed but my kindness shall not depart from thee Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. Save the Lord that had mercy on thee. And so, and I remember reading that. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. You know, that, that God just loves me this much and, and he understands. And, and he, he understood how I was feeling how everything you know transpired so when he told me to share this I thought it was so hard I didn't know how I was gonna be able to share but I cannot withhold praise from him I cannot no matter how hard it is because he's worthy and I praise him Hallelujah. 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 You know, sometimes when you're going through something tough, you find yourself alone. But that's not an accident. God wants you to know that he's the one we have to run to. He's the one that has the answer for us. I love family. But God wants us to know that he's the one that has all that we need. Amen? Let's give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah. As our last uh, testimony for the night, I told my brother, and he's batting cleanup <laughs> tonight, uh, my brother Ray and I uh, crossed paths in Brooklyn, New York, but we didn't meet until he came here to this church, and we met here, but we had attended the same church for a while. It was a large church, so, uh, and he has uh, uh, a lot to thank God for. I want to invite uh, Brother Ray Rios to come up. And give thanks to our God for his goodness and grace. Amen.
just want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the opportunity to speak. I stand here under the shadow of his mercy because if it wasn't for his mercy, I wouldn't be here today. And to my sister, may the healing hand of Jesus be upon you. Pastor Joey was saying, my family came from Puerto Rico. Like many immigrant families, they came to New York for a dream. My mom and dad, which is Adria, my mom's name, and Louis. We have four sisters and six brothers. I was number seven, and for those who Think of lucky numbers, they ain't lucky for me. We're blessed. <laughs> Praise God. Like most families in Brooklyn, you know, we moved there and, and um, we grew up in the, when I first moved to East New York, I was born in Brownsville. And I lived in East New York. I grew up, it was an Italian and Irish neighborhood but it soon turned to be uh, a hood. <laughs> As I was growing up, it became Hispanic and prime them, you know, black and sprinkle here and there of other people. But I grew up again around drug dealers and you know, those were people that influenced us when we were kids. Um, but I wanna thank God for a, a pastor who, answered the call of Christ and opened up a church on Belmont and Essex, I think it was Essex Street, and knocked on the door of my mom's house and said, we just opened up a church and we're uh, conducting vacation Bible study. And so my mom, who was, do anything to get rid of us, <laughs> Uh, take them away. <laughs> and I, I was exposed to, uh, to the Lord very young. It was a Pentecostal church. And uh, so God was always in my life on and off as I was growing up. Of course, I got away, you know. Uh, my dad left my mom. My mom couldn't control us, so we became... Uh, Havoc on the streets of Berman and Blake, Shepherd Avenue and Pitkin and all those places. I think Pastor Joey was more sheltered. Because <laughs> we didn't, we, <laughs> thank God for that. <laughs> and so I got into substance abuse, you know, um, I grew up in a household where my oldest brother was a Beatle fan, and my other brother was a Motown fan. <laughs> so, uh, of course, um, we had salsa music, so between uh, I Wanna Hold Your Hand and Just My Imagination and Che Che Cole, I was a little crazy from the beginning. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Well, fast forward it back in 1976 through a good friend of mine who was working on me for a long time. I had gotten away from the Lord. I got into all kinds of substance abuse and nonsense. He worked on me. His name was Frank Soto. And he was one of those guys that he can convert anybody. I mean, I, I, he even gave a Hasidic Jew for a run for his money. <laughs> and that's hard to do. <laughs> and um, he worked on me, of course. And I was like, yeah, man, come on with that Jesus stuff. Yeah, you know, I believed in God, but I was like, ah. I was too into the world, of course, like everybody else. 
But after that, um, you know, not to get too cluttered with the story, but I accepted Jesus back in 1976. And it was a journey that, uh, boy, uh, it had a lot of ups and downs. When I first got saved, I just was one of those guys that wanted to save the world. I, I joined another church out in Long Island that, that was really engaged in evangelism. And basically, we had every 7-Eleven covered. In fact... In fact, um, there were some good testimonies that came back to the church and said, thank heavens for 7-Eleven. <laughs> Praise God. But um, fast forwarding, I had a fall from grace, not being disciplined in the Bible, and thinking I was a long ranger, it got me in a lot of trouble. And I soon find myself involved with drinking and drugs. And my life became a total wreck. I ruined my marriage. I lost my children. Painful. Even to talk about it is painful. I heard a great evangelist named Nicky Cruz that once said, he was invited to speak at the Grace Tabernacle Church and he said these words, do I have to talk about my past? Because it's painful. I understand what he was talking about. So, after I failed and had a great fall, I didn't want to serve God anymore for the fear of failing again. I wasn't being disobedient. I just, you know, been there, done that. I just moved somewhere in the middle of nowhere. I find myself on a place called Jared, Virginia, in the middle of nowhere. Started a new life. And there, running from God, didn't want to know anything about the Lord. And through several accidents that I'd had on the job, I had hurt my leg and, you know, and so the doctor told me, take it easy for a couple of weeks. And, but I just felt that God was trying to reach me. In fact, the second accident that I had, I had a funny, I just said something that topped them from the top of my head. I said, God, if you're trying to reach me, you got my attention because I almost broke my leg twice in one week. I've never been hurt. And so through rehabilitation, I ended up um, trying to walk this out and doctor said, keep walking and you know, do all your therapy and all that. And I remember one day I was coming out of my home and, and I said, well, let me walk. The doctor says to walk this out. Okay, so I'll walk. As I was walking, I heard a voice that said to me, why don't you go to the, to the high school? There's a track. And it was funny because I'm going like, yeah, yeah. I'll, you know, I was, I was answering myself. <laughs> so I ended up at this high school and I'm walking around, it was 96 degrees, I'll never forget. My son Jeremiah was there. And he ran around the track and he quickly was sweating. He ran into the car and as I was walking, stretching my leg out, a lady comes by jogging. And, I, and she said, good morning. I said, good morning, you know, I'm just walking. She came back around and she slowed down and I don't know exactly what happened, but we started talking about Jesus. And I said, you know, I used to once serve the Lord. And she went, oh my God, what? And she said, you know, 
God sent me here. I don't know why he sent me here to this track today, but now I know why. And she started to look up into the sky. She says, Lord, I know that you sent me here to talk to him. <laughs> Some of those Pentecostals are, you know. <laughs> but thank God for Pentecostals, right? They... So she started to scream and all that. And he said, brother, I got to pray for you. And I says, oh, God. I said, all right, all right, pray for me. But I, I figured, you know, I always bumped into some Baptists. And they always like, well, all right, I'll pray for you, brother. But, you know, they'll keep walking. But not a Pentecostal lady filled with the Holy Spirit, right? No, I'm going to pray for you right here. I said, what? Right here? This is a high school. She said, no, I've got to pray for you, brother. I said, all right. I said, Lord, okay. So I put my head down, and she said this most wonderful prayer that touched my heart. She started to scream, oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, restore my brother who has fallen away. And so I said, okay. Uh, I was all shooken up, and I said, what, what church you go to? She goes, I go to the Assemblies of God's Church, and that's the first church that I got saved. God set me up. <laughs> he set me up. I walked in that church that Sunday. The lady was there, and she went. <laughs> and I sat in the back quietly, and as I walked through those doors, and got a seat in the back. The pastor looked at me, kind of strange. And he was coming out of the book of Samuel, chapter 15. And he said these words, that Saul disobeyed the Lord. And there was no record of him ever, or his family ever, serving God again. He was completely cut off. It hit me like a brick. That thing hit me so hard because even in my backslidden state, I always felt I can come back to God. You know, I always gave God the glory or thanks. But for some reason, that hit me so hard. I disrupted the whole service and ran down that aisle screaming, God, do not forsake me. Do not forsake me. And I ended up falling on an altar, crying like you won't believe it. I didn't believe I can cry like that. So I rededicated my life to the Lord. That was 13 years ago. And thank you. And so, it's been a journey. It has led me to this place. I'm so thankful. My dear sister, she knows I'm a mess. She would see me back there. There's times I want to quit because I think things are not working out and da-da-da, whatever. And she came up to me one day back, like they said, Brother Ray, we love you here. I was crying. I can't speak to her, I've run out of tears. <laughs> but I'm so thankful for Pastor Joey and his wife, Missy, because there's so much love, there's so much love. I've never felt so much love in my life. I I'll be honest with you, I've been in a lot of churches uh, in Hagerstown and no knocking a church or anything. Some of them are weird. <laughs> Especially when I hear prophetic and all that. <laughs> but I am so grateful. I am so glad to be in God's grace. He's still working on my life. He's still working out some issues that I'm praying for. So, so this leads me to this. This is where you guys come in. Please pray for me because I got a wandering heart. I go in and out, out and in. 
but I need your help. And just say, just remember me in a prayer that God will restore me completely. And so, with that I say, I hold on to one scripture verse. I, I wish I was a Bible person. These people with all these scripture verses. I feel unprepared. But I can remember one, and I'm holding on to that one. Right? I praise God, brother. And that one is Philippians 1.6. Right? And it says, uh, uh, oh, my God, I know I, I was rehearsing it before, but he who has begun a good thing and shall come to the day of Jesus Christ, something like that. Bro. But anyway, brother. So with that, I just wondered, anybody that's out here today that is like me, perhaps you have fallen away Maybe you've let God down. Give him a chance again. Open your heart today. He'll open your heart to Jesus. He will restore your life. No joy. The, the, joy, the joy of the world cannot compare to the joy of the Lord. And so we have to. Amen. Come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Young people, hold on. Because the lures of this world will try to grab you. I, I, I pray for all the young people in this church. Hold on to somebody. Hold on to an elder. When you see yourself slipping, call somebody. I wish I had to. You know, I had this macho thing. I ain't going to bother nobody. But I wish I would have just, hey man. I'm wrestling with my faith. I'm being tempted. Oh, man, get a lifeline. Get a hold of a brother, an elderly, an older brother that's in stronger with the Lord. And just pour your heart out to him. And say, don't, don't be ashamed of saying I'm weak. I'm falling. I'm drifting. Call upon him. Call the pastor. I know the pastor, will, he's such a blessed person. He, he always answers my call anyway. <laughs> I love Pastor Joey. But again, thank you for inviting me to speak. And God bless blessings to everyone. And uh, thank you. Amen. Amen. And now I have a long sermon to tell. No. I just have a little uh, devotional thought to leave us because I want to give thanks to God tonight. I want to give us all an opportunity. And I'm going to ask William and anybody else can help me. There's some papers back there, some pens. I just give them out while I uh, just share some thoughts. You know, the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18, rejoice always, pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And I was doing a little search online on the health benefits of a thankful heart. And uh, not anything to do with uh, Christianity, just health benefits of a thankful heart. I want to read something real quickly to you. There was a few studies but it says, research from the University of California, San Diego, shows evidence that a grateful heart leads to a healthy heart. Scientists there studied a group of 185 people with a condition called asymptomatic heart failure. People with this condition have had unhealthy changes to their heart that could lead to serious heart failure, but they haven't had systems like being out of breath or feeling tired yet. The researchers found that the patients in the group who were the most grateful, slept better, were less depressed, had less fatigue, and were more self-confident. They also had less chronic inflammation, which damages the inner lining of the blood vessel walls. That makes heart disease more likely. Specifically, they had lower levels of a substance called CRP, 
This is an important indicator of harmful inflammation in the body. The California researchers then did a second study. They wondered if cultivating a grateful heart, a thankful heart, might prevent heart damage from progressing. So they tested health measures in a group of 70 patients with asymptomatic heart failure. Then they asked them to keep a gratitude journal and write down two or three things that they were grateful for every day for eight weeks. At the end of the study, patients who had kept the journals had lower inflammation levels in their bodies than patients who didn't keep a journal. They also had an increase in heart rate variability, another measure of good heart health. So then when you go back to the verse that says, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus, then you could see that God wants you to be thankful for your own good. He made us, and he knows how we function, and he knows the best health condition for us. And thankfulness is huge. But I want to take this one little step further because the Lord takes it a step further and calls for us to be thankful as a sacrifice. That's what being thankful in all circumstances means because all circumstances includes bad circumstances, doesn't it? Psalm 50, verses 14 and 15 say, Make thankfulness your sacrifice to God and keep the vows you made to the Most High. Then call on me when you are in trouble and I will rescue you and you will give me glory. Now, a sacrifice of thanksgiving is giving thanks for something that you would not normally be thankful for. And this would align with 1 Thessalonians 5.18 that says, be thankful in all circumstances. Now, when you give a sacrifice of thanksgiving for something that normally you wouldn't be thankful for, what you're doing is you're acknowledging and believing that God works everything for your good. That's Romans 8, 28. You are saying amen. We love that verse, don't we? But in God working everything for our good, that also includes, includes the things that we don't think are so good. That's the miracle of Romans 8, 28, that he works everything, what? Even the bad things that I think happen, yes, he works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So you're saying I acknowledge that God is true and what he's saying is true and that he does work everything for your good. A sacrifice of thanksgiving also is you crowning Jesus as Lord and trusting him with your life. Sacrifice of thanksgiving. This looks one way, but Jesus is Lord, and he said he was going to take care of me. And like faith found out, he does deliver us, and he does take care of us, and he does protect us when we call on him. When you give a sacrifice of thanksgiving, you are submitting to the will of God in your life. Just by Doing what Jesus said, what the Bible says, give thanks in all circumstances. You are receiving whatever, as long as you're walking in the Lord, right? When we wander off, like we all have, it's not only Ray, we all have done that at one point in our life. Thank God for his mercy and for second chances and third chances and fourth chances. He doesn't, he doesn't stop. His mercy is amazing. But when we give a sacrifice of praise, we're accepting God's will in our life. Let me tell you something, that if it wasn't for the things that I didn't want to happen in my life happening, and for some pain, and yes, some suffering to come into my life, I would not know the Lord Jesus like I know him today. I am hard-hearted like everybody else. I am stubborn like everybody else. And it's God's grace that let me go through some things so I can realize what's eternal and what's temporary. What's important and what's foolishness. What is valuable and what is not. I'm so thankful that I've been through some things. I'm so thankful that I've experienced things that 
If I was to choose, I wouldn't have chosen to go through them. But because of God's will and allowing me to taste some things, he is Lord of my life. And there's nothing better than that. And a sacrifice of play, praise and of thanksgiving is you declaring that, listen, your reason to be thankful is not your circumstances. It's not that you're doing well or that you have five houses or even one house. Your reason to be thankful is that you have a relationship with God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. Period. You're thankful because you have a relationship with the God who made you and the God who does everything in you that you're looking for in other places. A sacrifice of thanksgiving. I love to give God thanks for things that he does. He does little things. He does big things. Yesterday, uh, uh, my son Joey came home and he realized he didn't have his wallet. And you know, when you lose your wallet with all your ID and everything that's in there, he started to get very nervous, and he called his job. They said, no, it's not here. He said, did I leave it on top of the car and drive off? So, you know, I said, well, he said, well, what do I have to do? And I said, well, let's not talk about what we have to do. Let's just pray. God knows where it is. Right? And so he left to go back to Virginia where he works. He had gotten all the way home. And my wife and I prayed, and we said, Lord, you know where it is. Find it for him. Lord, show him. Am I right, Joey? Show him that, that you care about the little details. And it wasn't 15 minutes later, he called me. They called me from the job, and they found it under a stack of papers. And we began to thank God. God answers prayer. God sees, and he cares about things like that for us. But a sacrifice of thanksgiving is giving thanks for things that you would not normally give thanks for. And listen to what Psalm 50, I'll end with this. 23, Psalm 50, 23. But giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. If you keep to my path, I will reveal to you the salvation of God. If you can be thankful in all circumstances, there's nothing that can knock you down. God will show up in your life like never before, because you are saying, I fully trust the Lord. So what I wanted to do tonight is you have your little pieces of paper there. Do you have them? I don't want you to write down what you are thankful for that you like. I want you to write down what you want to be thankful for that you normally would not be thankful for. Because tonight, we're going to give God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. It's easy to thank God for finding Joey's wallet. It's easy to thank God for providing this and that and providing a home and providing a car, providing our resources. That's easy. I want to give God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. So write on those pieces of paper things that right now God is going to bring to your heart that you would not normally thank God for. And by doing that, you're saying, I trust you, Lord. I trust you with this thing. I trust you with that thing. That circumstance doesn't look good, but Lord, I'm going to trust you with it. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to thank you for it because somehow you're going to use it for my good and for your glory. I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that. And you know what we're going to do? Nobody's going to see that but you. I'm not going to collect them. After a few minutes, we're all going to come up here and with our mouths, we're going to give thanks to God for those things. What's on your list? You're going to get up here and you're going to thank God. And I'm going to thank God for some things too that are not convenient. Things that I would have changed right now in my life. But I'm going to give thanks for him. You're going to join me and we're going to offer to the Lord a sacrifice 
of thanksgiving. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to do that, and then we're all going to come up together.